Firstly, I want to uh, thank you, Cahir. Like, I want to welcome the Minister to the House. Uh, we met yesterday evening and the Joint Oaks Committee on Agriculture, and we discussed this issue at length. So I'm not going to repeat some of the issues I said there, but just to say at the very outset, I have an interest in racing myself and would be a regular goer of Punchestown, the Curra, uh, and Nace, all in County Kildare, and of course Leopardstown, it's quite close to where I live. So I, I just want to make, put that on the record. I am a supporter of the industry, and I want to spend most of my really thing really talking about horse racing and the work of Horse Racing Ireland. Uh, horse racing uh, and breeding are, of course, an integral part of agriculture and our rural life and our rural development and our rural uh, economy and are usually connected directly and indirectly directly in relation to rural empl uh, employment. And for those who don't know that over 90% of all owners of brood mares in this country are farmers who have less than four animals. That's extraordinary. That indicates the, 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 the issue. Right across this country, there are farmers holding brood mares, very, very successful breeding programs. So it's not to suggest that there are, uh, this breeding uh, and the holding of brood mares is centralised by 10, 15 studs. They do, of course, uh, contribute enormously to it. But 95% of people hold, or hold less than four brood mares on their farms, and I think that's a, a particularly important thing to suggest. Uh, the export of horses, of course, both export and inward investment is enormous. International owners choose to avail of this country for their equestrian and horse activity in breeding terms. Yes, there are, are attractive tax regimes in place for that, but you've got to put that up against the success in terms of the income, particularly employment in rural communities, where it's quite difficult to get it. There is, of course, the online issue of betting and the revenue that brings in, and it's been suggested that betting revenue uh, is well in excess of 100 million from betting revenue. So there's a, you, there is an income coming in uh, in terms of betting around the industry itself. Minister, I said it yesterday and I'm asking you again. I had a look this morning at the Indicon report. Indicon uh, consultants carried out a very extensive report in relation both to Irish racing and also the HRI, but also in relation to um, the greyhound industry. And there are issues around that that I think need to be revisited again. I don't suggest we need another report in relation to horses or greyhounds. I suggest we dust down the Intercon report in both cases, in relation to both sectors. Also, Deloitte carried out a very extensive report and made numerous recommendations in relation to Horse Racing Ireland, and I think they need to be looked at. I don't think we can talk about this sector uh, without touching on animal welfare. And I think we're giving substantial. 96 million has been approved in the budget, and of course the provision in the 2001 Act is that it gets the approval of both houses of the Oireachtas. So here, we're doing that here today. And I think there should be some conditionality, some expectation, some way of measuring animal welfare issues around this funding, because I think that's terribly important. Uh, I note, Minister, from this copy of the draft copy of the statutory instrument that you, we are discussing and you're going to sign, uh, along with Minister Pascal Donoghue and Minister Michael McGrath, um, the, the issue, and you mentioned yourself, the cumulative aggregate effect of all of this money will be 1.46 billion, billion euros to, the, uh, to, the, to racing and dogs on an 80, 20 per cent break. But that's a huge amount of money, and I don't have a difficulty with it in terms of the sport and the breeding and the economy and the benefits of it. But it is an enormous amount of public money at the end of the day, so therefore the conditionality in relation to this is something that I'd ask you to look at again. 96 million approved by the Dáil in the budget, that's been provided for. A number of people have suggested to me there are issues around governance in relation to both these organisations. I've had a look at the Controller Auditor General's report, and I am now satisfied having looked at the most recent one, one that's waiting, I understand, in your desk to be signed in relation to the audit financial statements for Horse Racing Ireland and the greyhound industry, and I'm happy having read them thoroughly. Uh, and the protections and the guidance and the reassurances that the Controller Auditor General has given us. And I think that's comfort to be able to say that the Controller Auditor General has looked at these accounts has issued his reports and has a strong, healthy recommendations and reports, and I think that's worth having. Finally, Minister, I just want to say two things. Horse Racing Ireland have an amazing strategic plan, and for those who don't have it, I think they should get it. I think it's really important that we look at it. I think we keep it to the fore 
I am giving a commitment here that I will continue to keep this issue to the fore on the Joint Office Committee, as I know my other colleagues here will do. But finally, I will ask you, Minister, there is an issue of the tripartite agreement in relation to the movement of bloodstock, and currently it is around 25,000 a year between the UK from Ireland, the UK and France. And that is a, a very, very insignificant uh, transport route in terms of racing, but also in terms of breeding and the towing and throwing of animals coming up through Europe, but mostly from France. So the tripart arrangement, as you would be well aware of, exists between France, the United Kingdom and Ireland. And things will change on the 1st of January with Brexit. And we're already having discussions about this and people in the sector are uh, seriously concerned. So I would ask if you would share with us, uh, with the Shannon here today, how are those talks going? How are we going to have a resolution or find a resolution to the movement of bloodstock across this country into the UK and down uh, by, by shipment and down into France and on road, of course? So that's a critical question, Minister, I'd like if you'd give some attention to. But again, I want to thank you for coming to the House. I want to thank you for your very, very comprehensive uh, speech in relation to these matters. Thank you very much. Thank